Hey everyone, welcome to Greybeard's Jewels. Today we bring you the fifth and final part of our five part series of haunts and legends from every state. Stay tuned as we'll be debuting a new segment soon, which incorporates two of my personal passions, creating content for you and crocheting. Now on with the show. In historic Deadwood, the Bullock Hotel is haunted by founder Seth Bullock himself. Even after his passing, he wants to make sure his guests are well taken care of, and he'll make his presence known if things aren't to his liking. Sometimes dishes in the restaurant's kitchen will shake and rattle, or even fly from the shelves, and appliances, lights, and showers turn on and off on their own. He also interacts with the guests who've claimed hearing their names called and being tapped on the shoulder by an unseen presence. They also report TVs malfunctioning, as if someone else is controlling the remote, and alarm clocks ring at odd hours, even if they're unplugged. Talk about a wake-up call! The Orpheum Theater in Sioux Falls is haunted by a spirit known as Larry. They say he's the spirit of an actor who disappeared during a dress rehearsal long ago. The night of his disappearance and likely death, his fellow actors heard a gunshot ring out, and when they went to investigate, they only found a pool of blood, and the body it came from was nowhere to be seen. Later, new owners took over and found a casket in the boiler room. Surely startled by what they found, they returned later to remove it, only to discover it was already gone. To this day, reports of strange noises and shadowy figures are the norm. Coincidentally, the Orpheum Theater in Memphis is also haunted, and one of the spirit's name even rhymes with the spirit of the Sioux Falls Theater. Here, Mary, the spirit of a little girl who was killed in a tragic car accident outside the theater's front doors, has been spotted in the audience by onstage performers, and she also likes playing tricks on theater staff by slamming doors and messing with the lights. Another creepier spirit is that of a masked man who's been spotted waving from high up in the theater's air ducts, where he reportedly spends most of his time. Not so sure I'd be able to pay attention to the show, knowing there was an entity creeping about the rafters above. The story known as the Bell Witch Haunting began in the 1800s when the family patriarch, John, spotted a creature that looked like a rabbit-headed dog in his cornfield and tried to shoot it, only for it to disappear. From that night on, the family's lives would never be the same. They were constantly tormented by the spirit of a witchy woman named Kate that, while often heard, was never seen. There was incessant rapping on the doors and windows from outside, and the blankets would slowly be pulled from the beds. Family members were pinched, hit, and mercilessly tormented until finally the father died from a poisoning Kate herself took credit for. There's a cave located on the property that's reported to house a portal with which the witch would come and go as she pleased. Unlike many stories which can be attributed to legend and lore, this one has been historically documented even by the likes of Andrew Jackson, who later became our seventh president. The Grove was built in 1861 by W. Frank Stilley and his wife Minerva. The property changed hands through the years and even served as a restaurant at one point. The house is said to be haunted, and unexplained voices and footsteps are heard, and things move about on their own. Loud wailing comes from the second floor, and mirrors often come crashing off the walls, and people get the intense sensation of being watched. Minerva is said to still be there, and is often spotted walking the grounds, or disappearing through walls. In Texas, you might want to be a bit extra wary of children approaching your car or your front door. You see, they might just be black-eyed children. These black-eyed kids tend to corner a person and demand entry either to your car or your home, claiming they need a ride home or they need to call home or use your restroom, get a drink, or something of the sort. And they don't like to take no for an answer. They prey on adults who are alone, and those who've come face to face 
have a terrible sense of fear and find themselves doing things as if they're being compelled. Some people have even reported waking up with the uneasy feeling of being watched just to spot one of these creepy creatures lurking in the shadows of their room. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on all notifications so you won't miss a thing. Thank you for your support. Now back to the show. The beautiful McCune Mansion plays host to many weddings, and it seems there's a little girl spirit here who enjoys dancing with the guests, and whose smiling image often appears in photographs. She can be a bit mischievous though, and sometimes rearranges the decorations that have been set up for a wedding reception. She's spotted wearing a gown and will often disappear into the mirror. Another spirit who's seen here is that of a tall man in a black cape who seems only to observe and appears just to those who are alone. Reports of phantom music and voices, doors that open close, lock and unlock themselves, and many cold spots have all been reported. The ancient petrified wood scattered throughout Escalante Petrified Forest is best to be left where it's found. The park has an exhibit of letters written by guests who thought they were above the law and a parent curse and took souvenir chunks of Petrified Wood home. According to their accounts, since they took their ill-gotten gains, their lives were filled with misfortune and bad luck, and in an effort to reverse their fortune, they're sending the cursed rocks back. Do you think this worked out for them? Or was it too little too late? The Green Mountain Inn in Stowe has been around since 1833, and its resident ghost is known as Boots. Long ago, Boots came into the world in room 302, born to a chambermaid and horseman at the inn. Like his father, he himself became a horseman, and once heroically saved the day from a runaway stagecoach. In appreciation, local taverns gave him free drinks, but this turned out to be not such a good thing, and before he knew it, he found himself in jail, where he learned to dance, thus earning his nickname. After his release, he returned to the area and found a young lady stranded on the roof during a snowstorm. Because who doesn't like to hang out on the roof during a blizzard, right? Anyway, once again, his heroic nature took over, and he tried to rescue her, but sadly slipped from the roof to his death below. Today, he makes his presence known during snowy, stormy nights, and people can hear the faint sounds of his tap dancing from the upper floor and the roof itself. So, apparently the town of Stowe is quite the haunted destination, as it's here you'll also find Emily's Bridge. This legendary tale has a few origin stories, one being that young Emily had planned to meet her boyfriend, who her parents did not like, at the bridge so they could run away to elope. When he failed to show, she became so distraught, she hung herself from the bridge's rafters. Another, less dramatic version instead states that as she was riding her horse across the bridge, she was thrown from its back and landed on the rocks below, dying there before she could be found. Either way, she met a tragic end, and her spirit still remains at the bridge. Visitors hear footsteps and the screams of a female, and cars have even been scratched as they've driven across the bridge. If you were driving here and heard a woman scream, would you stop? The Fairy Plantation House is home to many spirits. One is quite fond of chatting up the guests, and another is said to be the not-so-friendly ghost of the accused witch of Pungo, Grace Sherwood, the only woman to be tried for witchcraft in the state. Other reported spirits are those of a spectral artist on the second floor and two young children whose giggles can be heard as they run up and down the stairs. And there's even a ghostly cat that walks through walls and emits phantom meows. It's also said that there were times balls of light were spotted dancing about the roof and the lights inside would turn off and on when the home was not even occupied. Similar to Route 55 in New Jersey, Virginia State Highway 895, also known as Pocahontas Parkway, was built right through Native American artifacts and burial grounds. So, needless to say, 
things have been happening as a result. During construction, two workers died, and many freak accidents and equipment malfunctions occurred. There are several reports of Native American spirits appearing on horseback or on foot, either right in the middle of the road or along the roadside. In the area, the sounds of Native American whooping and drum beats are heard, along with screams, cries, and eerie chanting. Toll booth operators aren't immune from the hauntings either, and have reported things moving or flying off the shelves in their booths. And phantom cars are seen racing towards the booth, only to vanish seconds before impact, sometimes causing the booth to rattle as if it passed right through. Not only is the Walker Ames house in Port Gamble haunted, but the town is as well, at least according to some. Haunted happenings have been documented here since the 50s and include sightings of full-bodied apparitions, unexplainable voices, and the feeling of being grabbed by unseen hands. There's an unmistakably ominous feeling and odd smells are reported, and some people have even been lucky enough to capture photographic evidence. Passerbys have reported seeing people look out at them when the house is known to be locked up tight and empty. Reportedly, the attic of the home is where the spirits of children, and possibly their nanny, who people say always appears to be searching for something, have often been seen. Told you the attic was creepy. Legend holds that for those brave enough to dare, Maltby Cemetery held the 13 steps to hell. The steps that led below ground to the entrance of a wealthy family's tomb reportedly changed the lives of many who ventured into the depths. It was said that as you descended, you became enveloped in a world of darkness and total silence, and when you turned around at the bottom, you would be greeted with a vision of hell so terrifying it would drop you to your knees. Many tell tales of friends who dared test the legend, only to emerge in a stupor, unable to speak, or driven to complete insanity. But to curb curiosity and keep trespassers out, they've demolished those stairs, so all that's left is the terrifying legend. The White House is said to be quite haunted, as one can imagine, with all the history that has taken place within its walls. Past presidents such as Thomas Jefferson, Andrew Jackson, and Abraham Lincoln have been glimpsed walking the halls long after their deaths. Jefferson's spirit has a penchant for playing the violin in the Yellow Oval Room, as was reported by Mary Todd Lincoln during their tenure. Andrew Jackson's spirit has been heard stomping about and swearing, and the sounds of his guttural laughter are heard, sometimes coming from the bed in his old room, known as the Rose Room. But the most often spotted spirit is that of Abraham Lincoln. Grace Coolidge often reported sightings of him, frequently in the yellow oval room, standing with his arms clasped behind his back, gazing out the window, as he often did while reflecting on his duties as president. Queen Wilhelmina of the Netherlands was staying in the Rose Room and heard a knock at her door. She opened it only to see Abraham Lincoln decked out in his famous stovepipe top hat standing there, after which she promptly fainted as would I have as well. Another Lincoln sighting comes from British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, who stayed in the Lincoln bedroom. Apparently, as he stepped into the room from taking a shower, he spotted Abe leaning casually against the fireplace in the room, before smiling and slowly disappearing. The Glen Ferris Inn dates to around 1840 and served as a field hospital during the Civil War. With all the Civil War activity in the area, spirits couldn't be far behind. Employees have reported seeing the Lady in White, who was likely a Civil War nurse, and many people have reported seeing the inn's most famous spirit, the Colonel, whose most striking feature seems to be his long beard. The Colonel appears to be quite harmless and is known for playing in the birdbath and closing doors behind people. His footsteps have been heard walking up and down the halls, but his apparition has only been spotted from the waist up. 
Imagine you're driving along a dark road when suddenly a huge man-like creature with bat-like wings and horrid red eyes swoops down from the sky. Was that Batman? Not if you're in Point Pleasant. The Mothman sightings began in the mid-60s and culminated in the collapse of the Silver Bridge. Is this ominous-looking winged creature at fault, or was he simply trying to warn of impending doom? But if he was simply a harbinger of things to come, why would those who've come across him become so anxious, terrified, and confused? The opulent Pfister Hotel is haunted by one of its founders, Charles Pfister, who along with his father dreamed of offering guests the best money could buy. Visitors and staff have spotted his plump, cheerful spirit keeping an eye on things in the lobby from the grand staircase or strolling the gallery on the ninth floor. It's believed his beloved dogs have joined him in the afterlife as well, as their phantom frolicking has been heard throughout the halls. The hotel is frequented by visiting baseball teams who've often complained of being tormented by paranormal occurrences. Things move on their own, doors open and close, blinds open and close of their own accord, and disembodied voices, knocking, and loud footsteps have all been heard, and sometimes are so disturbing the players are unable to sleep. Perhaps the spirits here are Brewers fans even in the afterlife, giving their team a truly unseen advantage. The Rhinelander Hodag is said to be a small demonic creature that's covered in spikes and has fangs like a saber-toothed tiger, plated armor on its back like a dinosaur, and short, stocky legs that end in long, sharp claws, and a long tail that ends in multiple sharp spikes, and the head of a frog. But, the cherry on top of the beastly concoction has to be the horrendous skunk-like stench. Its size ranges from that of a dog to over six feet long. But, rest easy. This cryptid creature was the creation of a trickster in the 1890s looking to make a buck and a name for himself. Or was it? The Old Faithful Inn isn't only a prime spot to see the prompt eruptions of the well-known geyser, but it might also offer guests the chance of spotting one of the enormous inn's resident ghosts as well. It turns out, part of the structure was built over some unmarked graves, and as a result, those who were displaced might be to blame for some of the paranormal happenings here. Eerie occurrences include fire extinguishers spinning around, indoors opening and closing on their own. Spirits seen here include a frontiersman, a man trying to escape his scalding fate by crawling from a steam hole, an 1890 era's woman who floats at the end of beds, and the spirit of a little boy who seems so real when he runs up to the staff crying for his parents, but soon disappears before their eyes. But the most famous spirit of all is that of the Headless Bride. According to legend, a woman and her new groom, whom her parents did not approve of, came to the inn for their honeymoon. Soon after he gambled away her dowry, his true color showed and proved her parents right. But it was too late and her headless body was found in their room by staff and the husband was nowhere to be seen. Her head was later found in the crow's nest, an area perched high above the lounge where musicians once played for the guests below. Her spirit has often been seen carrying her decapitated head with her as she roams. That'll do it folks, we hope you enjoyed today's show, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Greybeard's Jewels. And don't forget the podcast!